All right, I'm gonna do um, my first play of Hero Realms. This is actually my first play of any kind of Hero Realms, but I've got the um, Ruin of Thandar campaign deck to play against. Uh, so I thought I'd do a real quick little game here and um, see if I can learn the rules of this game. If you s know the rules and um, you see anything that I do incorrectly, go ahead and please put it down in the comments because that really does help learn the game. I'm going to play through this campaign of the Ruin of Thandar. So um, if in between episodes, if you see something that I make a mistake on, that would be helpful. Um, I'm going to play with the wizard. It was just the character that was on top of the stack. So I'll throw the uh, two cards that the wizard start with, starts with here. Fireball is a one-time use thing. Deal four damage to each minion, or each master and minion in the target area. And then channel. I can exhaust it and spend two gold and a health to draw a card. So that's the wizard's abilities. Got 50 health here for the wizard and 50 health there for the master. Got the wizard's deck here. We'll shuffle that up. You got to start by building the master's deck. So I have all the cards with the S down in the corner. So for one player, you're supposed to remove 12 of the 13 of these cards. Uh, so I'm just going to grab one instead of removing 12. So we'll just grab, how about that one? Put the rest of those off to the side. Now I've got the stack of cards that have a one down in the corner because that matches the, um, the one that's on the master's card. I'll throw the master over here real quick. I don't know if you'll be able to see the whole card. Yeah, I don't know how much you can read the abilities there, but the blue one is one damage to the combat pool, stun your highest champion. The green is two to the combat pool and discard a card. Red, which is also his favorite, is three to the combat pool, and gold is he heals two. I actually had a question when I was reading the rules. Maybe you guys know this. The health, it says it's 50 health as the starting health. I skimmed through the rules again. I couldn't find anything that says that this is the maximum health, either for the master or for the player. So I don't know if you can actually go above that when you're healing. Because again, it doesn't say maximum hit points. It just says starting hit points. So I'm going to play that you can go up forever. That's... Not realistic, but I mean, you can go up past your starting hit points. And maybe I just missed it, staring at the rule book for too long. All right, so you're supposed to make five stacks, or no, actually I'm supposed to shuffle that S card into these cards with the one on it. It's good enough, now we make five stacks. And if it was an uneven number of cards, extra cards would go in the middle. And we shuffle the mastery cards. And one mastery goes into each stack. And then you shuffle the stacks. You're supposed to still pick them up in order just so that the middle ends up in the middle of the deck to make his deck. All right. Lots of shuffling here in the setup. So I'm gonna put the market here across the middle. I don't know which heroes are like, are good for the solo version of the game. Well, it's not even solo because you can play against the campaign deck with multiple people. If you've played this and you know, leave me a comment too. What you if I, I'm going to do the campaign first with the wizard, but uh, for my next playthrough, I don't know if I'll do the next playthrough on the channel because there's a lot of stuff that I actually want to play. Lots of time during the... Uh, I, I saw what that bottom card was there on accident. During the coronavirus pandemic to play 
games here. So got time to do stuff. So let's just, I shuffled this before, but oops. Let's give this a quick, real quick one through. And we got to get five of these out here. One, two, three, four, five. Anything looks interesting or to decide to buy it's if I think I need to throw it up over on the the close uh, closer camera so you can see it. Oh, let me turn off that overhead light to get rid of some of that glare. Just one second. There we go. Hopefully that is better as far as the glare goes. All right, now let's just give the wizard's deck real quick because there's only 10 cards in here. One, two, three, four, five for our starting hand and the adventure book. So the adventure book told us for chapter one that we would be fighting the enthralled regulars as the master and the story. It's early evening at the inn at Four Rivers, and the place is crowded with humans, elves, and a dozen more races, all eating, drinking, singing, and shouting. You're seated at your usual spot in the back corner, enjoying a horn of ale and wondering what to have for supper, when a crash and clatter from near the door turns your head. You see an upended table, broken dishes, and spilled drinks, as well as an angry-looking dwarf shoving an equally furious orc. You watch with only mild interest. Fights are common at the Four Rivers. Then you notice the smoke. Black, cloudy tendrils flow across the floor of the inn. Whenever the smoke touches a customer, their eyes go wild and they surge to their feet, weapons drawn. You quickly realize the inn is under attack by a sinister enchantment. As fight after fight breaks out, your eyes track the smoke back to its source, a group of cloaked figures by the door. Their garb and markings call the Necros cult to mind, but there's something off about them. You raise and ready your weapon. While seeking a path through the choking smoke towards the intruders, a barrel of ale smashes the splinters at your feet. Looking up, you find a trio of crazed customers charging toward you. You'll have to subdue them quickly in order to get to the source of this dark magic. And the enthralled regulars on the card are the three customers that the story appears to have been referencing. All right. So, let's take a peek at the hand here. Got basic gold cards, and I'll just show you real quick what ignite and spell components are. Like I said, I'm not gonna do this for every card, but just so you can see these since they're in the wizard starting deck. Ignite is an action, just two damage to the combat pool. And the spell components is a gold, and then it makes actions you buy from the market one gold cheaper. All right, so the master actually goes first. So we flip the top master's card and it is temporary insanity. So the first thing is we see this gold here. So we look at the gold and this is exactly the scenario I was talking about. So the gold is heal two. So I'm assuming he goes up to 52. And then the effect on temporary insanity is uh, we draw the top market card and I take um, damage for that. It, it adds it to his villainous pool or his, his uh, combat pool to do his villainous attack, but he doesn't have any other combat damage out here. Oh man. So we look at the cost of this up here and it's a seven. This would have been a nice card to have out there and that's the amount of damage I'm going to take. So down to 43. 43. To 52 so now what do we have out here as far as so I've got two to my combat pool and essentially four gold and a discount of one if I want to buy an action um, this influence action here is kind of nice it costs two it generates three gold and I could pitch it for three damage recruit is also a good action two gold three healing plus one healing for every champion I have in play 
I've got an orc grunt champion here that costs three. So I actually could spend three gold on him and then use spell components to get one of these actions over here for cheaper. So I think what I'm going to do is I'll spend the gold and the um, discount. Because there's another white card out here, and this has an ally ability of another gold, plus the healing, I think this one is the better bargain right now than the influence action. So I will take the recruit and fill the market. Oh, and of course, so then this would have comboed good with this card. So now, do I, and he's got four health. I actually think I'm gonna buy this cult priest and then uh, plan on buying this. Again, maybe go down the red card path here at the beginning, because it costs three. This one does here is I can exhaust this champion to either get a gold <clears throat> or a combat point. But if I have another red card, I think those are Necros cards out then I get four damage in addition to the damage from up above who another green card okay so those are spent and I've got two to do to him here so down to 50 there's no minions for me to use this on at first so it just goes straight to the master one two three four five and it is his turn. So we flip a card. It's gold. So he's going to get the health again. And now this attaches up here. And we get three of these up here. He's going to level up to level two. Still no minions or anything to worry about. So um, I've got my cat familiar, my fire staff, and another ignite. So I could put my cat familiar out. I'm going to use these two gold to buy this influence card. So those are used. I do not have a second action to trigger this draw card on the fire staff. So I've got three and I'll use my cat familiar for four damage, taking him down to 48. Ready my cat familiar. So you can take a peek at the cat familiar while I shuffle just a little bit. I need to refill the market. Another green card. So cat familiar I can exhaust or expend the cat familiar. I can't remember what language they use in this game to get either a combat point, a gold, or to heal one. And he's got two health that it can absorb. One, two, three, four, five. Let's take a peek at what we got. Gold, fire staff, gold, gold, and ignite. So all of our powerful cards are in here. They're powerful, the ones we bought. Okay, uh, master's turn. Charging drunk. So now we've got a minion, and it's the green power is it adds two to the combat pool. And just so I don't forget, I'm going to throw a two up here. And this is a regular minion, so it's going to come into my area. So I need to deal with it before I can do anything to the master. Um, and I have to discard a card. I think I will discard a gold. I'm kind of inclined to maybe just spend this two old gold on maybe either a fire gem or drawing a card with channel. So I'll discard a gold. 
All right, so now the master will use his minion. His minion will generate four to the combat pool, uh, makes it six. So the first two will go to my cat familiar. And then I will take four, so down to 39. And the end of the master's turn, that guy resets. Um, do I want to fire Jim, or do I want to get another card into here? I probably should get another card just to see if I get another damage, because right now this three damage isn't doing anything, because I have to do four to this charging drunk. So I'm going to spend two and a health, so down to 38 to use my channel to draw a card. So what I'm looking for here is either another damage or another action to trigger the, the drawing ability on my fire staff. Um, this is a, okay also, because that's the damage. So my champion will come out, and then I will use the champion to add one to the combat pool, and I've got three here to do the four damage I need to get rid of the charging drunk and stand up my cards one two three four five I've got one card left in the deck so we got recruit ignite influence gold and spell components so we've got some decisions to make on the next go around here three four five six seven if everybody stays alive I can afford Firebomb be getting the gold from this champion. So let's hope let's hope this card doesn't kill somebody off. Oh, bummer. So it's the blue mastery. And I say bummer because the blue here adds one to the combat pool, but also stuns my highest uh, white shield champion. So stun goes away. There goes my extra gold. Oh, wait, it's an action, and I've got spell components. Still good. It's also added one to the combat pool. Nothing else to add to the combat pool, so we go to 37, taking that damage. Okay. No champions to put out. I'm going to get the three gold from here. So three four, five, six, seven gold, and actions cost one less. I'm gonna get this firebomb. So that does eight to the combat pool. Stun target champion and draw a card. And then I can also trash it for five. One thing I don't know, well, let me do this, let me finish this real quick. Does, is the trashing in addition to the top part? So I always get the top part and then I can, um, or sacrifice I think is the terminology in the game, I can sacrifice it like on this fire gem so I get the two gold and the three. It probably says that in the rules but I just don't remember. So I've got this two damage here uh, going against the boss for 46. I also get to heal three from Recruit, and it would be plus one, but I don't have any other champions. So that's gonna take me back up to 40. I've got one here. So there's two Tithing Priests in the market. Orc Grunt costs three, that adds two to the combat pool. Rampage is an action that costs six and does six to the combat pool, another good one to have. Then it says you may draw up to two cards, then discard that many cards. So another good action to get. With the uh, spell components, it seems like the wizard's deck wants to go for Actions. It's kind of like spells, I guess. All right, so let's see what he's going to do. Another temporary insanity. 
So the red is going to add three to the combat pool. So we got to draw another market card. It's only one. So that one plus the three is going to be four damage. There's no champions or anything to absorb it on my side. So 36. Okay, let's see what we got. Two gold, spell components, four gold, and recruit. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I could pay for rampage, and it would only cost five. I'd have one gold left over. Let me do this heal real quick first. Take me back to 39. So we'll buy a Rampage. I have one gold left, which I can't afford anything. And I don't get the extra gold because there are no other of the white cards in play. One, two, three, four, five. Got a big turn coming up. All right, so I'll show those cards when it's time. All right, so Master's turn. Another Charging Drunk with the red, so three damage to the combat pool. Um, plus his four is seven, takes me down to 32. And that's the end of his turn. All right, so got regular gold. We've got the ignite that just adds two, and fire staff. Cult priest is a champion, so I'm gonna get him out over here, and then firebomb. When I play firebomb, I can stun target champion and draw a card. I think that uh, these mean that I can stun. His minion? Let me just check the Ruin of Thandar book real quick. Uh, minions equal champions. Minions are treated as champions for the purpose of all game effects. For instance, an ability which reads stun a champion can be used to stun a minion. Perfect! So first though, um, Fire Staff. I can throw Firebomb over here so you can see what it looks like. But while that's over there, Fire Staff, I have two actions in play because Ignite is an action and Firebomb is an action. So the uh, ability on Fire Staff lets me draw another card, which is Influence. Probably use that for gold. I could trash it for more damage as well. Um, and I also got, a, this is another Necros card. I think that's what it is. So that's gonna trigger this ally ability, which is gonna give me even more damage off of the Cold Priest over here to my combat pool. So this is a big damage turn for us. Okay, so the ability from Firebomb, stun a target champion. He is stunned and gone. Also draw a card, another gold. So, We've got five, potentially six gold to work with. What's out here on the board? There's a five cost red champion here. There's a three cost orc grunt champion here. Nature's bounty is more gold. I don't know if I need more gold at this point. I think I might just now wanna try to burn him down. So maybe I'll spend this three gold on this orc grunt. I've got two, potentially three gold left. There's another influence card. I might use this two gold to just take a fire gem for when it comes around into my deck to sacrifice it for three damage. Okay, so I'm done with my gold. Now to add up what's gonna be in my combat pool. I will use him for this one and this four off of this ally ability here. So that's five, 
six, seven, eight, plus eight is 16. 16. Do I want to do even more? I don't think so. So 30. Yep, so from 46 down to 30. That was a good turn. Two cards, so we need to shuffle and get three. I think we've seen plenty of regular cards in a row. I'm betting that this next card is a mastery card. So he's probably going to level up. One, two, three. All right, so let's see what he's gonna do. It's not a mastery card. It's another charging drunk. And with the gold ability is to heal him for two. So 32. Then he'll use his minion. I forgot to ready my minion. He'll use his minion to get four into the combat pool, which is gonna go against my cult priest's four health and finish the turn. All right. Cat familiar. Got two damage from the ignite. Hmm, not enough to, even with the cat familiar, unless I trash this influence card. Um, it is three gold, but I think I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna sacrifice this for the three into the combat pool. Use my cat familiar for another one into the combat pool to take out the charging drunk. And then this two will go against the master. Bring him back to 30. And then I'll just get another fire gem. No, I'll get this other influence. Replace the one I just sacrificed. It costs two. What do we got here? Death cultist, another red card. Adds two, and it's a guard of three. So, ready the cat familiar. One, two, three, four, five. His turn. Okay. So it's the white mastery, which goes to his favorite. His favorite is red, which is three damage to the combat pool. And now that there are three mastery cards out there, He's going to level up to level two, and he will draw two cards every time now. And we have to shuffle. I'm going to move my hand out of the way so I can do a small little pile shuffle here. So now his favorite is blue, and it does two to the combat pool. So the combat pools and his healing went up by one, and he's going to be drawing two cards every turn. Let's see, he had three in his combat pool, right? Yeah, so that takes care of my cat familiar and one damage comes through to me. So my turn, spell components, rampage, recruit. Oh, we got rampage and firebomb. And we've got more than two actions. So uh, the ability on fire staff triggers to draw a card, which is a fire gem. Firebomb's ability is also has to draw a card on the top. And Rampaging Orc says you can draw up to two cards, then discard that many cards. So I may want to do that because maybe this is just a, not a buying round. So I get rid of these gold here. So let's draw two cards. And I'll keep Ignite and 
toss this gold, these two golds. So we got one. Uh, do I have another white card out there? No, I do not. So I do not get the ally ability here. So as far as gold, I've got one, two, three, four, five, and I can get an action for one cheaper. Let's see, what champions do we have out there? I could spend two gold on this death cultist spend two on that say so the gold has been spent from this let me get that health real quick i do not have any champions to add additional healing so that card is done now i've got three gold that I can spend, I can get an action for three or I can just spend three. Um, I think I'll just get another fire gem to, as a sacrifice for damage. Because I'm about to sacrifice this one so as far as damage goes, let's see. One, sacrifice this to make it four. I can just put it on top of there. Five, six, plus six is 12, plus eight is 20. And I wonder if I should just sacrifice this now to make it 25 to leave him with five. Sure. So 25 damage leaves the master with five. Got two cards. Fireball could do four if I had one more damage in there somewhere, which likely I did. And someone's probably saying, oh, you could have played that to be over one two three okay his first turn of drawn two cards so one and two two charging drunks gold heals him for three so up to eight blue Stun my highest champion. I don't have one. Uh, two to the combat pool. So two to his combat pool. Plus eight over here. Makes it ten. Maybe I should have held on to Firebomb. Probably got greedy. So we've got a... Oh yeah, this is not good. Um, I will sacrifice Fire Gem. And with Fire Staff makes four to get rid of one of these guys. So that's been used. Using his two does nothing for me because I have to get four points to make it through this guy. So I've got two gold. It's going to get some more damage on a fire gem. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, yeah. hang on, back up before I go on. I'm just going to use my fireball to nuke this guy. Probably not the most efficient. Oh, you know what I should have done? Hang on. Back it up.
This was my hand, right? This guy was here. That's what I'm going to do. Fireball deals four damage to each master minion in target area. I will choose this area. So I sacrifice fireball, and that nukes both of these guys. Okay. Know the cards. Learn the cards. Have good strategy. <laughs> now I can sacrifice this fire gem for three. Did I buy a card? I have a bought a fire gem, didn't I? Oh well, yep, yeah, I've screwed this up by backtracking. I think this is the fire gem I bought with my two gold. It'll work out the same because I'll just buy another one. So sacrifice this for three, four, use him for five, six, takes the master down to two, then spend the two gold on a fire gem. One, two, three, four, five. Draw his two cards. I've got a mastery green is three damage and I have to discard a card and mastery red is four. So I'll take care of the seven damage that's in the combat pool first, but this is hopefully gonna be game over. It will be game over because this guy's gonna do two. So I was at 24. That takes me down to 17. I have to discard a card. We'll discard the gold. And get all kinds of champions out here to all swing in and do all kinds of damage. Enthralled regulars taken out. So go to the adventure book. Bar fight conclusion. So it says when the encounter ends, go to chapter two, which is bar fight conclusion. If all players are defeated, you lose. You can try again. If you reduce the master's health to zero, you win the encounter. Read the text below and collect your rewards. Story. With the regulars and several of the mysterious cloaked figures now unconscious at your feet, you take a moment to relieve the cloaked villains of their weapons and treasure. Then with a quick gulp, you down the remains of your drink and rush out of the tavern giving chase to the remaining cloaked figures. Rewards. Shuffle the five elixirs together and randomly deal one to each player. Put the remaining elixirs back in the box. Also, each player finds a class treasure. Each player shuffles the treasure cards from their class, draws one card, then adds that treasure to their personal deck, replacing a card if applicable. Put the remaining treasure cards back in the box. Go to the next encounter, chapter three. Note, you can play an encounter as many times as you like for fun, but you can only earn rewards once per encounter. Okay, so in uh, chapter three will be encounter two. I, um, I'll i do this one in the next video. Again, this was just gonna be a real short learning game through scenario one. I'll get the other decks out and we'll shuffle and draw the elixir and the treasure reward for the next um, scenario. Uh, again, if you see anything else that I screwed up besides the stuff that I already caught on my own or any other strategy tips, if you've played Hero Realms, the um, campaign deck, or even the uh, player versus player version, and let me know how the other champions are besides the wizard. I haven't even looked through their decks to see what kind of cards they have or to see how they play. Like the wizard, it looks like with his fire staff, he wants to be going for actions. He can get actions for cheaper and be using those kind of like uh, like spells or influencing other people and things. Okay, so I hope um, you enjoyed. See you next time. Thanks for watching.